Okay, this will be a demonstration of um, seven loop V fell braiding, uh, making a finger loop braid with seven loops. And um, you start with four loops on the left. Well, actually, you could start the other way, but four loops on one side, three loops on the other. The um, mounted from A finger, that's the index finger, down. The hand with the free uh, little finger, the D finger with no loop, will be the operator. It'll be the getter. It'll be the one that goes and gets uh, the loop, a loop from the other hand. The way I am holding my hands is, um, is facing each other, palms facing. It's kind of easiest to do the braid if your lower fingers are extended out a bit more than the others, because then your loops will make kind of, they'll present themselves in sort of a tunnel that your finger can go through very easily without having to weave laboriously in and out like that. So um, if you can kind of cock your hand so that the hand does not turn up, but the upper fingers are bent back a bit more. Okay, so here we go. Let me just if I can get the loops to show their best. So the uh, D finger with no loop is going to go through the first three loops on the other hand, and then um, it's going to take the index finger loop, the A loop. I am going to be demonstrating first a divided braid, and the way you'd make the different shapes of braid is based on how you take this loop. So this is very important. You're going to go through the loop to take it, bend downward a bit, let's see if that shows, and pull it through with no, it won't get a turn in this move, and release. Then the loops on the left hand will shift, be shifted up one position, freeing that little finger. Tighten. Tighten all the loops by spreading out to the side. It, I know it looks as if I'm tightening hard. I am not. I don't have a lot of tension. That's why I do it a couple of times to get the loops to sock up if I, but I'm not strangling them or giving myself blisters. I don't pull very hard, but I pull, I pull the loops apart in a completely straight line. I don't stop at an angle. I, I pull them apart until actually it, it kind of gives on the, um, on the header cord that they're suspended from. <coughs> that will make a, a neater braid pattern. Excuse me. <coughs> Okay, now I'm ready to go on the other side. The opposite, um, the other D finger, the other little finger, will now be the one that goes and gets a loop. It goes through three loops. Let's get that on the camera. And then it takes the um, index loop by going, reaching inside it and pulling downwardly on its lower shank. Now the right loops shift up one position, tighten a couple times. Um, uh, okay, let's just keep going. Hopefully, you will have already you've already learned the five loop braid. So, uh, the five loop and the three loop versions of this are easier. The O. Oh, I should mention when you're first doing this, do not be discouraged. Um, it's quite normal for the loop shifting right here when you're going to shift the um, ring finger into that loop that is often a stopper at first. It feels as if you can't possibly do it. It's impossible. I've, I've had <laughs> many people tell me, oh, this is impossible um, because, and they give me all these scientific reasons, um, or, you know, that their finger can't do it. Uh, it will learn how to do it. And it was kind of hard for me, too. I, I remember that was, that might have been sort of the hardest thing in actually all of subsequent, um, a little slower. It, it really, it only takes, it feels so hard, but it only takes one or two, at the most, three braids, little braids like this, to get used to it. it, it suddenly that, it's a problem with separating the, some people feel that it's the little finger having a problem, other people feel it's the ring finger. It, 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 they have a problem separating, and they learn, they catch on quickly, but <laughs> but in their own little time. They, they, they need a, often need a braid or two to get used to the idea of what they have to suddenly have to be independent fingers. Okay, so this is basically 
the moves. I'm, I'm hustling along a bit to um, get to the square braid portion, so I won't go real slow here. If you want to see these moves more slowly, um, look at my, I call it start here, my start here tutorial for five loop braids. That, that I go very, very slowly so you can see every little step really well. I want to kind of zip, and I'm holding back a little bit, but I want to zip down. And basically, in, in braiding like this without turning the loop that you take, the index loop is never getting a turn, it's, it's braiding, I'm braiding two braids at once. I'm braiding a divided, got to tighten, a divided braid, an upper layer and a lower layer. And um, this can be very handy. You might think, well, why would you want, you can braid all the way out to the ends and have two braids at once. Um, or what I'm doing here is I'm forming a loop at the top of my braid. I like to make a, I often make a loop at one or the other end or both of the braid. So there's my loop. I hope you can see it, a divided section. Um, at this point, too, I'm, I'm doing a different kind of start, and I'm not going to talk that much about it, but, well, let's just leave it the way it is. I have other, um, other videos showing that start. Okay, so now I've made, mm, it's, you know, a half an inch or so long, and um, it's about long enough, and I'm going to now join up this loop by making, in, doing a different kind of transfer, a turned transfer. I'm going to turn the loop as I transfer it, and that will join, it will connect the top and bottom layers of the braid. It has this loop that I'm going to take turns over the shank of the loop that had been braiding back and forth on the bottom of the braid, separately from all the top shanks. All, so far all the upper shanks and lower shanks have been braiding completely separately. Now they're going to join together on the, on the edges <coughs> of the braid. So I'm going to reach through, and I'm going to take, now take the loop from above the loop, like that. I could choose to take it from below, but um, I'm, this is what I'm teaching, and I think for V-fell braiding it tends to be a little easier. Um, taking it from above, taking the top shank, will turn that loop over. It's not that apparent. If you, if you held on to or put a tight little piece of string here, you would see that what had been the lower shank is now the upper shank. That loop got a turn. Continue doing that on both sides, reaching above the loop. You can, you don't have to be shy. You can reach up as high as you need to. You aren't timidly reaching up. These loops are, uh, well, they're not plastic, but they, they stretch out. So reaching and getting that one shift, tighten, reaching through, over, pulling the top shank, shift, shift, shift. Tighten. Again, on the other side, reaching through three, over, take the top, shift, 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 and tighten. Through three, over, shift, 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 tighten. Over, shift, 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 tighten, um, eventually, without even thinking about it, you'll probably be shifting and tightening at the same time, really, you don't have to wait. It, that'll, that'll just happen. Um, this is, let me zip along a little bit. I, as I said, I, I feel guilty going too fast, but I want to get this all into one um, video. And the, the other ones on the five loop braid have nice slow-mo um, where you can braid along. And it's really the same exact movements for the seven loop braid is for the five loop braid. You just have one more loop on the finger and your D finger, your little finger, is braiding instead of your C finger, your ring finger. 
Um, okay, what I would like to show next is the flat version of this braid. Again, it is just done just the same way the uh, five loop version is done. Now for the flat version, oh, let's show you the, let's see, here's our, our loop at the top the divided part of the braid. Then came the square braid, which will have chevrons on, if you're using single color loops, not bicolor loops, the upper and lower surface will have chevron designs, and the side surface, uh, well, it has what I call zigs, I guess. Zig, zig. It's, it's really the side of the chevron. The chevron the real form of this braid is four columns of um, which show on both the front as half a chevron and on the side. These are the ridges. They are the real elements of the braid rather than the sides. The four ridges are like the four posts of the braid. They're really the elements. But but what people look at, what you see as an element is is the front, the top, and bottom surface, and then these two side surfaces. Um, it's really like four telephone poles close together <laughs> is what it is. Um, anyway, so now, so this has been a um, unified braid. It's a double weave. It has two layers, but they're joined. The, well, the beginning wasn't joined. The beginning was separated. Now we're going to make a flat braid, which is essentially doing, this, doing the divided braid, but joined on one side, like a square braid on one side and a a divided braid on the other side. It'll have a slit, and then we'll be able to open it after, usually after we finish. Oh, I don't know if I can reach. If we, oh, that's right. I'm, that's why I had the header cord. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so now I will be doing the transfer with a turn on the left side, but not with a turn. Doing it straight on the right side. So shift, shift, shift. I took this orange loop. It barely shows with a turn. You can actually see it. It has a, cro a cross in the shanks down here. The one that the loop that just came over, that orange loop. It's the only one that does because the other ones have all had a loop pass through them, so they don't have a visible cross in them. They're all. This is good for error checking. <laughs> if you drop a loop and want to put it back on, none of the other loops except the one you just took with a turn should have a twist. Now, on this side, I'm going to take the loop with no twist, with no turn. I'm going to take it as I did in the very beginning of this video. Reaching through it, see if that shows, bending down, pulling it off, with no turn. And you can actually lift it up, you can see it has no, no turn in it, no twist, shift, shift, shift. Then, oops, remember, it's good to have a mantra at this point, because you have to remember to turn it on the left and not on the right. So, turn, tighten or not turned, or whatever you want to say. Tighten. Turn. Tighten. Straight. Tighten. Sometimes they say left over, because left over is a word, so kind of a good mnemonic. Right through. Um, or I suggest that as a mantra. Left over, right through, left over, right through, left over, right through. If you make a mistake with, um, with this, it's it's more annoying than making a mistake with a square braid because the square braid, eh, a you know, little mistake or bleh, left over. But with a flat braid, if you make a mistake here when you're supposed to be going through and you go over, you're basically tying your flat braid together at that point, and it's either going to be squinched in and square at that point, or usually it it really it just makes those too long floats drag across the try to tie the braid together and instead make a, two, a, a big long X across the, the face of the braid. Um, <clears throat> I recommend learning how to undo because um, it's not 
hard to, when you've made a mistake, to if, when you know how to un unbraid, to go back and just get to that point where you turned the loop and you shouldn't have, and, and unturn, you know, turn it back. Um, and I do have a video on that, on unbraiding. Also, it's good to check, and I'm a little unsure if I have made a mistake. It wouldn't. It would be okay for this video, right? I started with a square braid, so it would be okay. It would show you what a mistake is. Maybe I should do one. But the way you can, a, a quick, fast way to check is just to run your fingernail down that slit and see if you feel anything getting in the way of the slit, tying the slit together. Okay, well, let's just, this, we haven't gotten very far with the flat braid, but let's, I should have put, parked these. I'm going to put, carefully put the other hand loops onto this hand, keeping them separate and kind of squeezing them together. Okay, here's my rainbow braid. <coughs> the divided part, the square part, and here where you can kind of see the slit is the potentially flat braid that will be opened after you finish braiding. I barely have only braided about a half an inch. Um, but it opens up like that, and um, if I had made a mistake, which maybe I'll do next, it, it would make kind of an X across here. Well, that would be if I had turned the outer, uh, the right outer, the right transfer that's supposed to be straight. It would have an X across. If I had forgotten to turn one of the left transfers that should have a turn, there would be a little hole in the middle of the braid. And if you do that a few times in a row, that's how you make a loop in your flat braid. Um, <clears throat> so that's one side, that's the other side, very pretty. I never used to make wild rainbow colors and braids, and since I've been doing these demos, I, I just love them. Um, okay, oh, and as I say in one of my, go on too long about it in one of my five loop videos, you, when you start braiding again, you want to close that up close up that, bend it back again so it's folded, because your flat braid, if you braid it, especially if you braid it forcefully, um, pulling forcefully, while it's open, while it's opened out like that, it will tend to squish the braid inward and not be quite as wide and flat, and it won't stay in a cupped shape as, as it's braided. <coughs> it gets another shape I call three-quarters flat which is kind of a nice shape, actually, but if you want the full, fi fl full <laughs> what was I going to say, flat width of the braid, you do want it to braid closed into a, it'll look almost like a, it sh could look exactly like a square braid as you're braiding it. Just It's just slit on one side, <coughs> or it might look slightly cupped. Okay, so again, I'm reminding myself left over, right through, left over, right through. Let's get, a, let's get a little further down and then I'll do that mistake. Left over, right through, left, oops, over, right through. How much time do I have? I'm doing well because <laughs> I'm rushing along. I'm sorry, this is a, a bit more, this video is a little too frenetic. I'm sorry. The other, my, believe me, my other ones are much calmer, but I, I, um, sort of assuming that if you're seeing this, you have already learned the braid in the five loop um, series and maybe even the three loop series. So this is just a quickie to, to show the seven loop version. Um, and after you get used to, after your ring finger and little finger are used to this shifting, the shift, that really can seem hard at first. Some people breeze right through it, especially if they've taken piano or something when they were kids, but it, for most people, it does take a couple of braids before the ring and little finger kind of can separate from each other and easily do the shifting. When you're kind of used to that, you don't have to be even that great at it, you can move ahead and go on and try and learn the, the nine-loop version with thumbs. It's a great one. And um, I remember I, I learned it, I was doing it when I still wasn't totally comfortable with that that shift. It was still a little bit hard. and and it didn't seem to 
have, it didn't seem to be a problem to, um, oh, I forgot to make the mistake. Okay, this is just more of the square, uh, I mean, of the flat version. And uh, let's see if I can troubleshoot the mistake <coughs> that's very easy to make. Um, get this back up. Okay, one main mistake, the most common mistake, I make it all the time, is to drop a loop, any loop. Um, when you drop a loop, uh, and this just is going to happen, loops, loops jump off, they have a mind of their own. When you, when you drop a loop, um, <coughs> don't panic, don't go to, uh, don't drop all your other loops. Look at it, and before you even pick it up, think about where you're going to put it. Because sometimes once you get started picking it up, you, you get all fuddled and forget. So, okay, I think that it was on that finger. I'm going to pick it up and put it there. Now, it looks way too twisted. So, I'm going to untwist it. And in fact, I'm going to, I know that I was taking, this is the last loop I took, because it's on the little finger. It's on the little finger, and the other hand doesn't have a little finger. That's the last one to come through. And it has to have come through without a turn for this to be a flat braid. So I'm actually, I really want this, I really want to put it back with no, no twist or turn, or it will tie up the braid there. So I just make sure that this top shank goes to, yeah, to the, the one that's uppermost on my finger, goes to the upper portion of the braid. The one that's lower on my finger goes to the lower part of the braid. If I had been making a square braid, if I wanted to be, really perfect and pick it up just right. I would undo it all the way, see that, and then I would give it that half turn that it should have got when I transferred it. I'm not making a square braid, I'm making a flat braid, and that side that came through there should have come through with no turn. Um, so, so you just pick it up, you put it on, and you try and troubleshoot. You just look at the fell. Does it look all twisted? Does it look like it, you picked it up and wrapped it? You know, did it... Ooh, you know, that would look wrong. You, you just kind of look at the fell, look at, look at it down there, and as you get more used to this, the braiding, you'll know what looks funny and what looks right. Just put it on the right finger and then make it look right. <laughs> and you'll get better and better at um, having that be right. Uh, <clears throat> the other mistake to make is what I'm going to do now. Not, not right now. This next move. I'm going to take this with a turn, whereas I should have taken it straight. So let's do a few more moves. Oh, I should have turned that one. <laughs> make a lot of mistakes here. Um, so, so far that blue one is the one that has the mistake. And we'll go a few more over and straight. And then let's look and see what that looks like. Oh, parkway. Okay, probably I could have felt it. Anyway, I forgot to do that, but I open it up and I can see, well, it might be hard for you to see, come to think of it, because I haven't braided very far down from it, but these, the two shanks of this blue loop are crossing like a big X in front of everything else. It's, it might be hard for, if you haven't braided a while, to tell that that's wrong, but it's wrong. And if you had gone further, if the rest of the braid was all, if, the, if down here was braided and that was crossing, Anybody would be able to tell it looked funny. It would look different than everything else. So if you see a big X across when you open up, it's like, oh, shoot, I turned that and I shouldn't have. Um, and you can really go back and undo. Um, and I teach that in my A fell and B fell unbraiding. I'll show a bit of it here. I don't expect, well, at seven loops, you're, you're ready to unbraid. If you've already learned three and five loops, the uh, braids, it's, it's time. <laughs> it's time to start learning how to unbraid. I'll do it real. I'll, I'll just won't talk about it that much. You will be doing a fell braiding to unbraid. It, there's no point in dropping your loops and trying to pick it apart. That really, you just get a tangle because of the way the loop. If you cut all the loops at the bottom, yes, you could pick it out that way. But leaving them as loops and undoing, they just get tangled. They get caught in each other. <clears throat> For a fell braiding, which is the opposite direction of braiding, and it um, works just as well to braid, but it will undo this braid. You shift your loops down. I'm going to get that last loop that was taken, the last one. The hand that has the most loops is going to now lose a loop. It's going to go back. The white loop was the last one through, and I can actually look up here and see that it was the last one through. I'm going to shift my loops down on the other hand and reach through the, with the first finger. The A finger will be the active finger. 
And since these loops came through with no turn, they're going to come back with no turn. So the right hand loops had no turn, and they're going to come back with no turn. There, it came back with no turn. Now the other loops shift down. They're going to come back with a turn because they they came through that way with a turn, and now they're going to be un. That turn has to come out. If I bring it back with no turn, there will be a cross here, which will tie me up later when I'm trying to bring another loop through that. Undo it. So on this side, on the right side, I'm taking them back with no turn. Shut down. And on this side, I'm taking them back with a turn. And I can see when they come here with no turn that the loop is open. There's no cross in it. Now I'm going to reach through and get that blue loop with no turn. It should have had no turn. I should have braided it with no turn. But look, lo and behold, there's an X in it. There's a cross. I, that's the one I took wrong. And um, now I've come back to the mistake. I'm watching. You know, I don't, I'm not blindly zipping along. I'm looking at these as I take them. And I can see something's wrong with that one. It has a turn in it, so I'm going to undo that turn. And now my mistake is gone. I can, I could, when I really make mistakes, I usually go back a few more cycles just to be sure, because if I had, say, undone something wrong, or, or maybe that wasn't the real mistake, something would get tied up at a certain point, and then I would, I would, um, have found the real mistake. Okay, so now I can go back to my regular braiding. I'm bringing my loops up to free the, the D finger. That's the operator finger. I'm ready to go. Left over. When you start, especially when you start right through, be sure to say your mantra. Because everybody, I mean, doesn't matter how used to braiding you get, you make mistakes if you don't do that. I did that just the other day in a video I'm saying my mantra and <clears throat> didn't catch it until I was watching my video okay so that's about out of time that's the flat version of the seven loop <clears throat> the flat version of the square braid and we're divided, square, and flat. And if I braid divided again, I can make another another loop in my braid at the bottom, which is usually often what, anyway what I do. Braid divided again in the flat version. When it has a loop, it'll be a nice central opening, like a little keyhole. Okay, thanks for watching.